people who have taken a person's life, what happened? A 12-year-old boy rode his bike in front of my car and died. It ducked me up for a long time. I definitely had PTSD. I did a lot of drugs to compensate. I didn't invest in having a good future because I didn't feel like I deserved one. I still don't but now I have a family and they deserve a good future so I make an effort. When my kid got to 12 I thought about it a lot. She's 14 now. I know the accident wasn't my fault but it still feels like it was. I already had some depression before that happened and after it's been a regular battle. There are days where just getting out of bed is a major victory. Over time the guilt and depression have lessened and I have tools to deal with them but it's still something that haunts me. My best friend killed his neighbor's two-year-old daughter. He was driving past her house towards his and she ran into the road after a cat. He never returned, in fact he just got removal men to empty the house for him and only saw the neighbor at the inquest. He was cleared of blame, the car was in perfect condition, he was sober and only doing 12 miles per hour. He never spoke to the parents, it haunts him to this day because he knew the little girl so well. He just can't bring himself to speak to them. It was 18 years ago and we never, ever bring it up. A homeless man jumped out from some parked cars and I hit him. It was raining and at night, and the blood mixed with the water made it looks like a literal bloodbath. I could smell the mix of booze and blood in the air. I had a hard time the first couple of days, then thought I was good. Went back to work but had zero motivation, zero energy, zero emotions, I was just a shell of a person. I had a mental breakdown at the office, they had to call my parents, I was almost 30. I began doing extreme things to get emotions back. Sabotaging my job, vandalizing property at night, things like that. Anything to get some feelings back. I knew it wasn't my fault, that the dude was drunk and jumped out in front of the car and I couldn't have really done anything different, but as others have said, if I hadn't been there, this wouldn't have happened. It's a weird process to go through. I should have gone to therapy much, much sooner. Eventually, after a couple of years it kind of just went to the back of my head, forgotten, but whenever some other crisis happened in my life, it would be compounded by this. I lost a good job, some friends, eventually, compounded with other problems I didn't deal with, I lost my wife. I finally decided to get help, and while I know there's a lot of work to still be done, I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere with dealing with this, and other issues. Nobody wants to be on the hook for taking someone else's life, but if it does happen, make sure you seek professional help. Don't let one life being taken away cause your own life to be taken too. was driving to the mall one evening, a car made a left turn crossing my lanes, causing me to t-bone them. Teenage boy in their passenger seat and my girlfriend in my passenger seat both passed away. This was almost 20 years ago, I've since married and I have two sons, and mostly, I'm just numb. It's not that I don't care about things, but I don't experience true happiness all that much and just have an ambivalence I never had before that day. I've moved in most ways but my emotional range has never really recovered. A man attacked my wife. I killed him. We divorced. I became a drunk. I still am but I am functional. It happened 30 years ago but I still don't sleep well. Was forced in prison whilst on remand. For context on me. At the time I held a black belt in judo and a purple belt in jujutsu. I'm a big guy, 6 FD1 and at the time around 24 stone, 336 pounds. I was attacked by a group of men on my way home from the pub. It was around 2 o'clock and they'd been following me for a while shouting abuse etc and eventually they started speeding up to catch up to me, I'm not much of a runner so I turned to try and de-escalate things but the nearest one swang a massive full body haymaker and I just did what I'd been trained to do. Right handed Sayo Inaj. His neck broke when he hit the pavement. His friends all ran and left him. I walked off but walked back almost immediately, I tried to wake him up not wanting to believe what had happened. I called the police. I was arrested and I thought my life was over but, somehow the reviewing of CCTV and a witness account of things showed me doing everything in my power to leave the situation only turning to physically defend myself at the last second. Naturally I got a lot of praise from a lot of people who saw one scared man defending himself against many and I got a lot of hate from others who I guess knew him. Claimed I'd murdered their precious boy who wouldn't hurt a fly. Honestly. I sometimes think of who he was before. Was he a happy child? Did he do well at school? Was he loved? What did he do for a living? What were his children's names? What caused him to take the course of action he did that night? I don't regret defending myself and I never will. 
I just wish it had never come to it. I don't go out alone anymore. The opposite. I'm a nurse and I had a patient who was way into her late 80s. Had multiple issues. Had very advanced cancer with meds. She was very weak and had advanced dementia. Couldn't even tell me her name. Very debilitated and underweight. While her family was very conflicted in making her a DNR. Half her family wanted it, the other didn't want any more measures taken. Unfortunately the daughter with the medical power of attorney was the one wanting everything done. It was late in my shift. I was working a night shift so daughter was asleep on the couch. I had noticed the patient was declining in status. Very rapidly. This poor frail 40 kilograms women should have went peacefully. For a split second I told myself to pretend I didn't notice the decline and let her pass in her sleep. Instead I panicked and began CPR. Daughter woke up and insisted we do everything. I was doing compressions with one hand, could hear the snaps and crunch of her ribs. Her mouth was foaming blood as we intubated her. Her eyes bloodshot staring blankly at the ceiling. Her face sheet wide and cold. Yet we continued to assault this poor soul because we were legally obligated to do so. She later passed the next day. We had prolonged her suffering by a day. Forced her under the agony of a ventilator. Her death haunts me. I regret not letting her pass with dignity. Probably not the answer you're looking for but my mom and twin sister died when I was born. My sister was going to struggle they knew that she might not make it but my mom started bleeding and they couldn't stop it. My oldest brother said my dad was different before. I know my dad loves me but there's always this weird feeling between us. I've effectively killed plenty of people as a former ETA nurse, I lost count after a while, but I worked in a number of major trauma centers, so quite a few. All the evidence indicated that they were going to die, but by extubating, pulling their breathing tube out, switching off their ventilator and life-sustaining drugs, I was the one who expedited their death. To be honest, it never seemed to bother me as much as a lot of my colleagues. We'd often get support if we'd had a lot of deaths over a short-term period, and we'd have to go through all our feelings, but I'd usually end up giving them the answers they wanted to hear, because they wouldn't really get that I genuinely was fine. Most days if you had a death you'd end up with another patient shortly after. I'd support the relatives as much as I could and wouldn't want them to feel in any way rushed, but my focus after they left would be on admitting and stabilizing a new patient. I've taken a life more than once. I was in the Marine Corp and have seen and done hard things. But the hardest life was of my 14-year-old daughter. She had been in a coma for two weeks after a battle with cancer. We knew she won't wake up. Looking over to the drive, tears in my eyes and giving that nod to say remove all life support was the hardest thing I've ever done. I don't know if it counts as taking a life but I do feel responsible. I was in fifth grade and visiting my grandfather, there was no one in the house but us. He started having a stroke or a heart attack and he was reaching towards me because the home phone was near me. I just froze and watched him die, hours later I didn't even call the police or my parents. I've come to be very anxious when I see an elderly person and I try to avoid them, which has damaged the relationship between me and my grandparents that are still alive. I'm also a bit anxious when I'm in a house alone with one person, my boyfriend has been wanting me to move in with him but I prefer living at my parents' house with my parents and siblings. Best friend and I got into a fight over a girl. I ended up pushing him down a set of stairs. Told him I didn't care. We went our separate ways. He went home was dead in the morning from internal bleeding. We were both angry ducks so people just assumed he'd been on the wrong end of a fight. It hurt me. The day he died in my pin code for everything. Anytime I need to pick a date or four digit number, it's that one. I'll remember it till the day I go. Part of why I hate myself so much at this point. It's been almost three years now but I still believe I killed my second husband. I brought the flu home from work. He had a weakened immune system from years of problem drinking. I got better, his liver shut down. He went to the ICU but everything started going, fast. Technically, he died of sepsis due to the flu. I was also the one who had to decide to take him off the ventilator. He was already gone, I could tell from his face and his eyes. It took two minutes when they turned off the machines. Everyone says it's not my fault. But I brought the flu home. I'm the reason he got sick. I took him off life support. Survivor's guilt sucks. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. 
Share your views in the comments below.